Hello you guys, this is me, Melissa, and we're in the ranting shop here to discuss Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 4, Episode 5, Coins to Make, Not Friends to Fake. So in this particular new episode, we start off from where we left off. Remember that Tisha and her cousin Kiki were having a conversation about why Kiki was speaking on Tisha to Melody and basically Tisha didn't appreciate for Kiki to do that especially us as viewers we know that Melody sees Tisha as an enemy so how weird would it be for your family member to go to your enemy's pajama party and talk badly about you that's or talk about you at all. Give her ammunition. Give her information that was, you know, private between you and her. It's very, very petty. And it's very, it's a major abuse of privacy. But later on, we got to find out that it could potentially be a get back moment. Because um, way back in the day, like five years ago or so... I suppose Kiki needed some place to stay temporarily or something. And Tisha felt like she had to tell the the homeowners with which Kiki would be staying, which was Melody and Martel, why Kiki was staying there. She needed to tell them the nature of the 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 Kiki's visit. And Kiki felt like it was no place of Tisha's to tell Melody and Martel. But they did speak about it. They went to dinner about it. Tisha thought they resolved it. But apparently they didn't. And so now they're going back and forth about who should take accountability, who hasn't taken accountability. And at this point, I'm over this conversation. I'm. It just seems like something Kiki is dragging. And I really don't particularly care for it at this point. So as I said, Tisha is over them constantly bringing up that situation that happened five years ago. I would be too. And so Tisha is like, okay, I don't have a problem with it. I thought we resolved it. You're the one who constantly brings it up. So you're the one that needs to figure out how to move past it. If you cannot move past it, then the relationship cannot be any more than what it is. You know, so decide, do you want to move past this situation or do you want to keep rehashing it? Because at this point, it's ridiculous and it's giving me storyline and I hope that's not what it is. So Martel and Mr. Marceau to have a conversation and it, of course, starts off with, okay, the kids didn't show up to my book signing and um, if I were to ask Melody, she would say it's because it's her week and I have give I gave her enough time. According to Melody, that's completely opposite of what he's saying to Marceau. And I understand how it's, it's, an, it's embarrassing. I understand why it would be embarrassing. But you know that your situation with your ex-wife is hostile. What made you think that she'd do you this favor and decide, okay... Let me just forego my plans with the kids and allow Martel to have the kids. What makes you think she'd do that? Knowing the nature of your divorce is volatile, why wouldn't you err on the side of safety or caution and just do that when you had the kids? It's that simple. Like, I'm tired of talking about this situation. Martel is trying to make himself out to be this poor guy that's trying to fight this monster over his kids when in the reality of things it's because of his poor foresight that this happened in the first place and yes it's unfortunate and it's embarrassing but it's your doing you did that to yourself as far as what Marcel said about this is a classic example of people using the children as pawns I don't necessarily feel as if Melody was using the children as pawns but I do feel as if she used them to kind of teach Martella a lesson that, hello, you're not going to get what you want all the time. I'm not going to be as flexible as you think I will be because I have things to do and it's courtesy for you to ask me before you just make a request and think I just bend and fold for you. So in a sense, she used them or that scenario as a lesson to kind of teach Martel. When you do things, make sure you do it on your time and don't ask me for any favors because you won't be given any 
I don't think they will use that as a pawn. But I do think that Martel seemed to have been testing to see how flexible Matt Melody would be in regards to giving him the kids on demand when he wanted them. And it failed. And hopefully you'll not do that again. And a lot of people are like on Team Martel because they make Martel seem like this sad dad. And they made Melody look like this monster mom. But it is what it is. And she's not right or wrong for what she... She's not wrong, I should say, for what she did. I wouldn't call it wrong. A lot of people see it as Melody being vindictive and it was wrong. But I don't necessarily think it was wrong. I just think... It was unfortunate that it ended up creating this uh, embarrassing scenario. Because it is the children's book. Martel speaks about his wine opening, his wine tasting thing in Atlanta. Makes reference to the Atlanta boys trip. Tried to clean it up and said it wouldn't be like that. It would be this um, like more classy thing. Meanwhile, Marceau is like, yeah, it could be just like how it was the first time. Like, Mel Ma Tisha trusts me and I trust her. And doesn't matter if I'm going to a club and married. Doesn't mean that I'm doing things that single people do. Oh, my goodness. Sure you do. Sure you don't. Rumors have said otherwise. But anyways. He said the opinion that matters the most to him is Tisha's. And Tisha wants to continue to act naive. So, Mars tell Marceau is going to continue to do what he wants to do. Martel wants to be invited back into the joint venture, Schuld, which is a combination of the Holds and um, the Scots. And now that they had the falling out and stuff like that, we know that Martel did something kind of underhanded that caused well, the Scots do not trust him. So now that he wants back in, they have to figure out a way to kind of test him a bit before they fully trust him back into the company. And so that's what they're going to do. And so that was the end of the conversation, really. Martel said that he would also speak to Maurice about that at another Atlanta boys trip. I don't know how Tisha is going to take that. So Kimmy and Maurice talk about what Kimmy experienced the night before with Tisha calling her af just after she had um, a conversation with her cousin Kiki about telling other people about their business. And so Kimmy was like uh, letting her husband know that it's basically really ironic that they're arguing about the same thing that Tisha just now did by calling Kimmy and Kimmy heard a whole bunch of things about their back and forth and Marceau feels like eventually he's gonna hit the fan because they're gonna both go to Wanda and you know how Wanda is and um it definitely will be a big blow up we just have to wait to see how that unfolds so miss destiny and maurice speak and basically destiny is in a very bad financial situation at this point ever since the divorce a lot of things have been tied up in i suppose divorce legal leg legations and stuff like that so she's trying to get her business back off the ground and basically get on her feet again as we know she's been on public assistance so she's literally gone through the biggest extremes like a moment of very of great stability to a moment of brief marital bliss all down to a moment where she has to go on public assistance to sustain herself and her business so maury's supposed to help her up her credit score so that she'd be able to refinance her house and so on and so forth so destiny is in a very vulnerable position financially right now and what she needs more than ever is a friend and now we know that melody is not that friend for her because melody feels as if she was discussing stuff with somebody she considers an enemy so now the very person that melody encouraged the friendship with is the very person that 
she has to lean to the very enemy that Melody says she has in Tisha is the very person Destiny has to lean to for advice and for um, just somebody to lean on as she goes through this tough financial situation. And it's just very tricky. Uh, Maurice was asking us, so now you know that Tisha is Melody's enemy. How does that change your relationship with Tisha? Of course, it wouldn't change it at this point because right now she has nobody else to speak to. But of course, if it was in the beginning, if Melody introduced Tisha as an enemy, then of course, nothing would flourish from there because Destiny's loyalty would be towards Melody. But anyways, um, they spoke about that and she spoke about her issues with melody and everything like that and that was basically the conversation so we know that destiny is in a very tough spot right now and anybody that's able to be there for her, she will lean on them because she needs people right now she's in a very tough spot so tisha and her husband marceau talk about the situation with martel and whether they should invite him back into the joint venture that was short now, as I told you guys before, Martel kind of burnt them a bit and did some underhanded stuff. So, Tisha doesn't feel like she should really, she's not, she doesn't really trust Martel, I should say. So, she does not want to just, like, leave the door open for him to potentially burn them again. So, their approach, again, is to see how they work with him um, on a, like, um, a partnership sort of thing and if that goes well then maybe they might you know invite him back in who knows but i'm really happy to see that marceau waited for tisha's input before he decided to make a decision on marceau maybe progress is being made maybe everything he's been doing thus far has been an act and this is how he truly is i don't know maybe when it comes to business he's more willing to listen to his wife um more so than in other regards but either way i was happy to see that he decided let me go ask my wife first and then i'll get back to you so i was happy to see that so destiny and melody talk and essentially destiny saying that there are Mud not talking to Melody or her not having a good relationship with Melody is now bleeding into her business. People that are more loyal to Melody are telling her, I cannot proceed with this joint venture with you unless you make it right with Melody. Kind of out of loyalty to Mel. Melody is saying people don't even know that she barely speaks to um, Destiny. And so that cannot be the reason why. Her business is not going where she wants it to go. She also mentions that last year, she didn't necessarily abandon Destiny, but she did take time for herself. And so the first time she heard that Melody, she was a bad friend, is at that reunion in front of people. So I'm assuming prior to that, she didn't think anything was wrong. <laughs> so you guys, so remember last um reunion destiny was like melody kind of ghosted me after the show so melody said i didn't want to make you out to be this liar in front of everyone so in this particular episode as they're talking melody pulls out some receipts where there were correspondence between her and destiny for a while after that um reunion that show taped finished taping last season and what we come to find out is actually Destiny was the one that was kind of dodging Melody in these correspondence. It was Melody that was reaching out to her more so than she was reaching out to Melody. So that makes Destiny look like a liar. So Melody is really on a roll trying to dispel the rumors that she's a terrible friend by mentioning the fact that Destiny mentioned meeting with martel and melody was like why would you be friends with somebody that's dogged me out on social media and i do have to agree with destiny in regards to the fact that i knew martel before i knew you and you're asking me to abandon my friendship with martel because of you guys's personal divorce situation that should have nothing to do with me but there's also a situation where like after that divorce thing took place 
Tisha, sorry, Melody and Destiny got even tighter than she was with Martel. So in that sense, it does seem to be a situation where you've kind of made it seem like my loyal, my my friendship with you kind of surpasses your friendship with Martel because of the divorce. And now she's finding out that it didn't really change anything. And the fact that they've fallen out, she's going to go back to her default friend, which was always Martel. So I don't know. Let me preface this by saying all these cast members, they lie. They lie about something. They lie by omission. They blatantly lie. They choose to not answer certain things. They all lie. But just based on the fact that Melody was able to pull out those receipts of Destiny and her corresponding after the show, when Destiny said they never talked after the show, especially that chillaxing thing that she did type that she said she doesn't use, I'm just more likely to believe Melody in that moment because... She is denying something that Melody is showing proof that she said, right? And Destiny is saying that, oh, she didn't say the thing that she said. Like, I'm, I cannot really trust Destiny in that moment because it's very clear that there are certain things that she will deny whether she did it or not. And if it becomes a matter of semantics, we know how that could be twisted and turned. And... The only person that knows the truth is the fly on the wall that was there. As viewers, we have to kind of make an educated guess to decide, okay, which one do we have do we believe based on the facts that have previously been shown to us? And just based on that, Melody seems like the one that has been telling the truth. All in all, it is just extremely unfortunate that their friendship ended like this um it's very sad um melody is insisting that she was a very good friend to destiny destiny is saying otherwise tisha of course has said otherwise and i just don't know at this point let me know what you guys think in the comment section about this what you think about this episode who do you think was lying destiny or melody uh also are you I'm gonna be tuning in to next episode where we're gonna see Miss Wanda. The Miss Wanda finds out about the situation with Kiki. She's gonna be confronting Kiki. We see that they're gonna be Melody's gonna be asked about the relationship with Destiny again. We see that Miss Tiffany is gonna be looking for her dad and stuff like that so let me know what you guys think about this episode like subscribe and see you guys next time for another review from me melissa in the ranting shop bye bye